Hello viewers and welcome to yet another live action commentated match of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. My name is Mitch and I am the Hive Tyrant. Today I'm pleased to present another video sent in courtesy of Alexander Chimadon. He's sitting to the left and for today's game he's opted to play as our second Chaos Faction Warlord Kugoth Plaguefather. To the right is a gentleman named Tols Betelsen who instead is opting to select our second Tau faction warlord, On Shi. We can clearly see that the initiative token currently resides in On Shi's possession, and our first deploy action of the game happened to be a copy of the support Xin Yen Orbital City. So at any point, if On Shi launches an attack, as soon as that's successfully resolved, he'll re enter his controller's HQ, and then, as a combat action, you can exhaust the Xin Yen Orbital City in order to return On she or any other ethereal from your HQ to a target planet and then you ready that unit so it is absolutely superb as an opening deploy action and of course on she himself grants every Tau faction unit you control present at his planet the armor bane keyword which of course includes your warlord but a few additional deploy actions at planet number five for Alexander we see the splintered path acolyte a one attack one hit point unit with a command icon for one we see a copy of the Incubus Warrior at planet number 4. It's a 3 attack, 1 hit point, 2 command icon unit. Slith Mercenaries at planet number 3. Uh, 2 cost, 2 attack, 2 command, 2 hit points unit, which any player can purchase control of for 2 resources. And we see a copy of the promoted Corn Berserker situated at planet number 1. So it's a 2-4 with the brutal keyword with uh, 3 current command icons. And it's up against a copy of the Carnivore Pack played out by An Shi. That's a 3-3 three, three that costs 3 as soon as it's destroyed, you're refunded three resources, and we see a copy of the signature army unit, the Ethereal Envoy, played out to planet number two. Uh, so it's a 1-3 with a command icon, and as with any Ethereal trait unit, it's got that forced reaction where upon resolving its attack, uh, it bounces back into your HQ, but it's just as eligible as is on she uh, to be returned to any planet. But planet number one is going to be one card, one resource, one by Alexander, our player to the left, Planet number two, Kugoth's destination during the command phase is going to be one card, one resource, one by Kugoth. Planet number three is going to be two resources by On Shi. He'll be able to use his armor bane attack to kill off that Slith mercenaries with nothing that uh, Kugoth can do to resist that. And at planet number four, we've got a proxy card there to the right. I believe that's a copy of uh, the Vashia Trailblazer, which is going to be a two cost, two command unit uh, with one attack, one hit point, and that's that means both of our players are going to break even end at planet number five. That's going to be the Splintered Path Acolyte uh, winning uh, Alexander one total resource. So, our on -she player has the initiative, the Carnivore Pack takes a swing of three, the Corn Berserker is going to take all three points of damage, it's got a four HP Reservoir, however, and it's got the printed Brutal keyword, so it's going to be able to attack in return for five, and kill off that Carnivore Pack, which refunds on -she a grand total of three resources. So, was it worth the cost of a card to deal three points of damage to the promoted to the promoted Corn Berserker? Uh, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Uh, but Planum, planet number one, is going to be won by Alexander, and that means that the Corn Berserker is going to be relocated uh, to planet number two. So the Ethereal Envoy is going to be able to attack and potentially kill off the Corn Ber Berserker, but we'll have to see what exactly happens here. Uh... Kugoth Plaguefather himself is going to be able to attack for one. He's a 1 7 warlord, and as his reaction, you can pull a point of damage off of Kugoth and move it onto an enemy army unit. Uh, but the Ethereal Envoy itself is a 1 3 unit, so it's likely going to be able to survive this planet to be relocated elsewhere. So let's see what exactly is going to occur. Uh, that early game, uh, Planet 1 victory for Alexander was one green, one blue icon, so he could win as early as our current planet number four through green green strong point type icons, but let's see how things break down. Kugoth, we see, deals one point of damage to the Ethereal Envoy. The Envoy swings in return to the Corn Berserker, but we see a copy of Promotion discarded as shields, and therefore it's going to be able to survive. So... 
Looks as though that corn berserker lives, the ethereal envoy manages to retreat, and it looks as though perhaps Alexander is explaining some of the mechanics in regard to how Anshi is piloted, uh, but that's going to be Taurus successfully defended by our Chaos player. He's not actually going to be able to benefit from that planet's battle ability, but he will be able to control it. And it indeed looks as though Alexander's indicating that you can just kind of walk Anshi down the board to win battles at multiple planets. For instance, Anshi is going to be able to to take a swing, kill off the Slith mercenaries present at planet number three, then Anshi will bounce back to his HQ, and Anshi could either be returned to that planet, uh, thanks to the orbital city, or Anshi could instead show up at uh, planet number four, kill off the Incubus Warrior, and then trigger Iridial. So it looks as though we did indeed see those Slith mercenaries killed by Anshi, but since there's no Warlord present at that planet, uh, Anshi's not going to be able to hang around long enough to actually benefit from triggering that planetary ability. Note that Anshi is now relocated at planet number four. He's going to be able to attack again since he's returned to the planet and then readied courtesy of the Orbital City. He's able to kill off the Incubus Warrior, and then we've still Still got that Vashia Trailblazer positioned at that planet uh, with which to win command. And uh, if that doesn't actually happen to be a copy of the Vashia Trailblazer, which indeed I believe it is, I think this is Alexander's deck that he let uh, Tholes borrow or vice versa, uh, then it's a copy of the Earthcast Technician. But I believe it's a Vashia Trailblazer. And in any case, uh, you know, please excuse my. Uh, you know, posting a video with proxies, but I absolutely love seeing Anshi in action, and uh, any excuse to see a live-action game, you know, uh, warrants it in my mind, so it's not as flashy as an Octagon proxy, but it definitely works, and, uh, you know, a 1-1 one -one is a 1-1. One -one. If it uses the mobile keyword, I'm sure it'll reveal its identity without too much trouble, but in any case, we see our first we see our first HQ phase. Alexander now possesses the initiative token. Our new planet number five is going to be Elowith. It allows a victor to look at the top three cards of their deck, add one of those to their hand, rearrange the remaining two on the bottom of their deck. Planet number one, of course, is Taurus. If you control fewer units that you're, than your opponent, you can generate three resources. You can draw three cards. Farron, planet number two, is going to be the route, a non-warlord unit planet. Planet three is going to be Iridial. It heals. Planet number four is going to be Yvarn, which allows you the opportunity for both players to put an army unit from their hand into play directly into their HQ, entirely free of charge. But Alexander puts into play a copy of the Heretic Inventor, it costs one, it's got a command icon, it's also a 3-3, but it's got the obvious downside where your opponent gets to decide where exactly you end up deploying it. So, looks as though the destination for that unit is going to be planet number four. We see a promise of glory played out by Alexander. That's going to be two cultist tokens entering play into his HQ. He could sacrifice either of those 1-1s to decrease the cost of a demon subsequently deployed by his hand uh, by one for each token sacrificed. And it looks as though we see a copy of uh, Ambush Platform enter on Xi's HQ. A little bit of glare there, but that's going to decrease the cost of any attachment deployed by one and allow you an action uh, to put an attachment onto any of your units to deploy an attachment onto any of your units. And we also see a Vior Law Marksman put out to planet number five, uh, now opposite a rogue trader played by Alexander. So if at any point Alexander can conveniently promote uh, that rogue trader, then that'll be two cards and one resource for him, uh, whereas that Vior Law Marksman is now just sitting there doing absolutely nothing apart from contesting the uh, freshly played rogue trader. We've got a copy of Slith Mercenaries positioned at planet number two, that's a pretty reasonable thing to play late in the deploy phase, and we actually see a copy of the signature support uh, on Xi's Sanctum. Uh, two cost support played into on Xi's HQ. It's pretty simple. As an action, you ready any target unit at a planet with an ethereal, so considering the ethereal mandatory rule where you have to basically, you know, bounce them back to your HQ, it's not nearly as good on a unit like that as it would be on a Borkon Recruits or a Viorla Marksman, and it looks as though both of our players are shrinking the game state considerably. Looks as though the uh, Slith Mercenaries there changed hands potentially multiple times as both players are depleting their existing resources. So the Slith Mercs were bought by Tholes, they were repurchased by Alexander, and then I think that exchange actually happened a second time, unless I'm mistaken. 
but I'm busy commentating. On she shows up at planet number three, Kugoth instead shows up at planet number one, that means that Kugoth could indeed win the game as early as planet number four if he keeps collecting these green material, or sorry, strong point type icons. On she is going to show up at Iridial entirely uncontested, perhaps... I guess I'm not really sure what he was thinking sending himself to that planet. Uh, unfortunately, Anshi is not going to have the opportunity to attack. He's not going to be able to bounce himself back to his HQ and use Ximian Orbital City to relocate himself. He could have easily shown up at, say, Farron, killed off the enemy Slith Mercenary, and then bounced to planet number five, killed off the Rogue Trader, won Elowith, but in any case, looks as though Taurus is going to be once again successfully won by Alexander. He's got far too many units to actually trigger that battle ability, but it was going to be one card, one resource, one by him. Planet 2 is going to be two resources for Alexander. Planet 3 is going to be a card there to the right for Tholes. Planet number 4 is going to be a whopping one resource for Alexander, and planet number 5 is going to be neither of our players winning anything. Actually, I guess I spoke too soon. Of course, at the end of a battle at the planet, looks as though that Warlord is going to be bounced back to his HQ, and there we can uh, see the Ximian Orbital City do exactly what I was hoping it would, which is be to deposit uh, on Shi to Elowith there. So Anshi himself uh, need not really do anything. The Vior Law Marksman's able to take a pot shot for one damage kill off that opposing rogue trader, and uh, that means that uh, Anshi is going to manage to successfully win a battle at Elwith. So now uh, Tholes is going to have the chance to look at the top three cards of his deck, add any one of those to his hand, and then rearrange the remaining two on the bottom of his deck in the order of his choice. But we're about to see a new HQ phase, which is going to mean four resources and two cards for both of our players all of these supports are going to be able to ready and we're going to see our very final planet of the game here so our players are going through the motions of doing the hq phase and i wait with bated breath to see what our final planet is going to be so we've still got to move our initiative token we've got to move our first planet token but what exactly is going to occur? I think it's going to be Alexander's opportunity to start taking some actions first. And uh, what are we going to see in regard to deployment? Alexander certainly got a wealth of uh, resources available to him, and the same cannot quite be said for his opposition. Uh, it looks as though we've actually yet to have our Tau player uh, generate his resources this round, so I believe perhaps our players are bogged down in conversation in the midst of our HQ uh, phase. But I suppose just in assessing where we could uh, have units sent, I definitely think it's going to be a pretty reasonable idea for Kugoth to be sent to our, our soon-to-be, I guess, planet number two. Uh, Iridial is going to be the victory condition for Alexander, and there we finally get things underway. So Farron is, of course, going to be our first uh, planet. I guess our last planet of the game here is going to be Barless. So this is going to be all about Alexander trying to dump as many units as possible onto... His victory condition there, Iridial, uh, you know, the Corn Berserker, is going to be able to do a pretty nice job being located at that planet. And I'm starting to think that uh, white uh, paper proxy card at planet number two there probably is actually going to be maybe an Earthcast Technician, just because we haven't seen any movement whatsoever uh, done by like a Vashia Trailblazer, but I suppose that still remains to be seen. We've got a copy of Recon Drones now deployed to planet number 5. It's a 0-2, or sorry, a 0-1, I believe, with two command icons, uh, but it's a limited card, uh, and we actually see a copy of the Plague Father's Banner, so that is going to be Kugoth, Plague Father's Signature Attachment, and that means he is going to be a powerhouse by himself. If there's anything that Kugoth does well, it is endure massive amounts of damage. His reaction is to move a point of damage off of him onto an enemy unit. The Plague Father's Banner is the exact same identical effect, so we see that Ethereal Envoy now have a copy of Gun Drones affixed to it. If uh, Anshi shows up at that planet, it's going to be able to deal out an Armor Bane 2, uh, not during the ranged skirmish round, but if it has the opportunity to do that, that could be absolutely Absolutely devastating but it'll be able to bounce back to its HQ then the Ximian Orbital City is going to be able to return it to play 
There are a lot of different possibilities here, so whether Kugoth by himself is going to be able to win through Iridial, or if we're going to have to see uh, our, you know, Chaos player kind of reassess his position, he could also end up winning through Yavarn, and uh, he's already got a couple units present at that planet, but of course, uh, the Ethereal Envoy doesn't necessarily... You know, even though it's kind of stuck at planet number two, as soon as it's swept up into the HQ, whether through attacking or just being, you know, uh, swept into uh, on Shi's headquarters through that being the first planet next round and a battle concluding there, that could allow the Ximian Orbital City to, to deposit there as well. So we see another copy of the Heretic Inventor put into play at planet number five on Alexander's side, and the cards keep coming. We've now got a copy of the entirely hail corn berserker situated at planet number three so armor bane is going to completely disallow kugoth the opportunity to uh, take advantage of any kind of shielding effects but uh, we can readily see that he's allied with dark eldar so uh, with or without the ximian orbital city we could see a copy of archon's terror banish that gun drones laden uh, ethereal envoy away from a planet prior to its ability to deliver some sort of devastating area effect to volley and critically important to consider is that seeing as how planets two and three are the victory condition for alexander uh the initiative token at planet three is going to be in the possession of our on sheep player tholes and uh you know the envoy is it's a pretty survivable unit with a pool of three hit points so even if it doesn't have the opportunity to attack first, it could make sure that it gets in, you know, kind of the final word in being able to survive an initial attack, doing its gun drones volley with armor bane provided on. She is present at that planet, then it bounces back to your HQ, then it returns, deals another area effect to armor bane volley, uh, just incredibly nasty effects. But our uh, on she shows up at planet number one. Kugoth instead shows up at planet number three, dropping off his kind of a contingent of units, his retinue of units there. So Anshi is going to win two resources at planet number one. Planet number two is going to be one card for Thols. Planet number three is going to be one whopping resource for Kugoth. Planet number uh, four, where now resides a copy of Chaos Fanatics, is going to be two cards for Kugoth. And planet number five is going to be two cards for Anshi. So Anshi takes a swing. He manages to kill the uh, copy of the Slith Mercenaries, but he bounces away to his HQ, and that means Farron is not actually going to be captured by on Shi. So on Shi has a hell of a lot of mobility, but you can definitely fail to win some battles, you can definitely fail to capture some planets, uh, given that your ethereal trait units definitely don't want to stick around, and that's why it's a great idea to supplement them with Earthcast Technician, Vashia Trailblazer, all number of different things, but looks as though the Ximian Orbital City is going to result in on Shi being returned to planet number one in time, uh, to end up winning a combat at that planet, and that's going to be a routed enemy unit, but what exactly are we going to see? Our planets could stand to be spread out a little bit, because it looks as though some of those units from planet number three are bleeding onto planet number two, but now things are much more clear, uh, seeing as how that entirely hail healthy, uh, undamaged copy of the uh, brutal corn berserker is now banished from planet number three to Alexander Chimadon's HQ. But our Tau player is slowly but surely running out of tricks, and it looks as though uh, Kugoth actually triggers Yavarn, and that is going to be a copy of the formidable Black Legion Heldrake entering play. Area effect 2 uh, ignores flying, but an 8 HP unit is a hell of a thing to try to surmount when you are on Chi. So, uh, good god. And it looks as though we saw a unit put into play into uh, on Chi's HQ. It looks as though that is going to be a copy of the Vior Law a warrior cadre that's currently uh, kind of uh, invisible thanks to glare. Uh, hopefully our, our player will either lean forward a little bit or the sun uh, will shift its uh, position <laughs> or well the earth will shift its position orbiting the sun. Uh, I did take history at some point during school and in any case we see a new HQ phase four resources and two cards for both of our players. There's no new uh, fifth planet so we're down to four. The initiative token is now now in Alexander's possession, and the game is starting to all come down to this. There is a giant mountain of units, all situated at planet number two. That happens to be one of two victory conditions for Alexander that are readily 
available. Planet number five is also going to be a victory condition, but instead, if Anshi wins at planet two, if Anshi wins at planet number three, that instead could be Tholes taking home this game, but is he going to be able to beat down that uh, formidable Black Legion Helldrake? Is Alexander going to be able to stumble upon uh, multiple copies, or at least one copy of uh, something like a an Archon's Terror to get rid of that unit, or we can see he's got a copy of Warp Storm in his hand, or Zinch's Firestorm. Both of those, provided he has enough resources, could be absolutely fantastic uh, options for countering enemy units here. Very interesting uh, shoring up one of his possible victory conditions. We see a copy of Vicious Bloodletter played uh, to planet number one, and if that gets uh, an opportunity to resolve its attack, that is area effect three, which could potentially kill kill uh, that ethereal envoy should it hang around at that planet long enough, so it looks as though that is going to be all of Alexander's resources, but Anshi is going to have to do something to kill off that unit, uh, otherwise... Man, oh man. So even if Alexander's not going to be able to win planet number one, he might uh, just force his opponent to do a gun drones volley. And then, like, if Anshi has to show up at that planet to make sure that he gets initiative... We could potentially see the gun drones laden unit being returned to that planet so that uh, Ximian Orbital City doesn't have an opportunity to send the envoy to planet number two so that it maybe gets the uh, chance to fire a gun drones volley at all of those existing units. So we'll have to see how things break down here. We've now got a copy of the rogue trader uh, situated at planet number three for Alexander. So if he manages to win command at that planet, that's going to be an additional resource one by him. So, looks as though there are just a hell of a lot of different effects going on. Kugoth, I can only imagine, is going to go to planet number two, given the existence of that Corn Berserker in his HQ, uh, given the presence of that Black Legion Heldrake, I believe I spoke too soon in saying that there was a mountain of units sitting at planet number two. It definitely looked like it, based on where those units were. Interestingly, we see a copy of the Ethereal Envoy put out to planet number one, which is going to be in jeopardy of being destroyed by that vicious bloodletter, so it's very interesting indeed that we would see uh, them kind of double down on units there. We see yet another proxy card played out attached to the Vior Law Marksman. Uh, I believe that is meant to be a copy of promotion affixed to that Vior Law Marksman, so it's now going to be able to tie even uh, in regard to command presence with the Rogue Trader and uh, the Chaos Fanatics present at that planet, uh, and that's not winning you cards and resources necessarily, but that is going to be a tremendous amount of a uh, uh, you know, cards won by your opponent there. So it looks as though Tolls to the right is trying to trigger a copy of Deception. Uh, he wanted to target the Black Legion Heldrake, and he also wanted to target the Vicious Bloodletter, but unfortunately that specifies non-elite units if memory serves. And uh, if there's anything that five plus cost units are, uh, it is uh, elite, whether or not they're competitively viable prior to the advent of Backlash and any number of other uh, elite uh, empowering effects, but let's see what exactly is going to happen. We've still got five resource tokens there for our on she player. We've got four resources that uh, Alexander could easily use uh, to fund effects like Zinch's Firestorm and Warp Storm, so let's see how things are going to break down. We could easily see the Vicious Bloodletter and or any other number of card effects uh, kill off some of the Tau opposition there. So is Anshi going to have the audacity to arrive at that planet? Let's see where Kugoth goes. I can only... No! Kugoth shows up at planet number one, so he's going to actually try to be a little bit bold. He's going to try to press his victory condition. And this uh, definitely took me ever so slightly by surprise, but I suppose it definitely makes sense to try to do it. Uh, area effect two is, you know, if it's allowed to trigger that... That's going to be the opportunity for Kugoth to move damage, considering there's also that Zinch's Firestorm and the Warp Storm. That is going to be a tremendous amount of damage potentially dealt out uh, to all of these present Tau units. So what exactly are we going to see? Anshi himself has shown up at planet number one, and that means he brings a Viorla Warrior Cadre with him uh, that does happen to have an Ion Rifle associated with it. And very interestingly, if it's going to be able to attack for seven with Armor Bane during the ranged skirmish, and we've got 
that copy of On She's uh, Sanctum, that means that we could see it ready and uh, it could potentially, well, it's going to be able to hit, hit uh, Kugoth for a total of seven and he's got eight HP, so he's not going to be able to quite bloody it, uh, but he could kill off that vicious blood letter and that is going to be an incredible amount of damage outgoing. So let's see if uh, Chimadon is going to be able to win the battle at this planet or if this is going to be just uh, an incredible mistake here. So planet number one, that is going to be one quite handily by Anshi. That's going to be one card for him. Note that the Anshi Sanctum has readied that copy of the Viorla Warrior Cadre. Uh, Alexander's got five resources and I can only hope for his sake that he's going to be able to kill off that unit with a Zinch's Firestorm dealing out a mountain of damage. The Honor Blade could be discarded as a three value shield card, but otherwise that is going to be a wrecked uh, copy of the Vior Law Marks, or sorry, Anyway, so without the Honor Blade, that is going to be a potentially burnt-to-a-crisp copy of the Viorla Warrior Cadre, but uh, looks as though we see an Ethereal Wisdom played upon the uh, Viorla Marksman, situated planet number three, and there we go. We see a Kaoyan Strike relocating one of these units. Note that at planet number two, that was going to be one resource, one by Alexander, and now we've got a copy of the uh, Viorla Marksman with a temporary plus-one attack value boost, thanks to the Ethereal Wisdom, and now, thanks to Ambush Platform, it's going to be able to attack from Monumental 5 during the range skirmish round, and of course, because Kalyan Strike was able to relocate that to planet number 1 because it now has the uh, ethereal trait, that is going to be a potential mountain of damage being dealt out to uh, a Kugoth Plague Father. so let's see just how bad this is going to hurt Alexander here, uh, and now that the uh, Viorla Marksman is no longer present at planet number 3, that didn't prevent it, that didn't, that did not stop it from a tying up with Alexander's command presence at that planet. Looks as though that was going to be I believe all of Alexander's resources poured into that single Viorla marksman uh, thanks to a Zinch's Firestorm, so it is going to be outright destroyed. That's a promotion, an Ion Rifle, uh, and that Ethereal Wisdom effect now all gone, plus that Kalyan Strike gone. But, you know, the punishment is not ending here. We've got a copy of the Ennui Prelate entering play, and that means that the Viorla Warrior Cadre is going to be uh, raised to a grand total of an attack value of 8 during the range skirmish round, which also happens to be Armor Bane, and that means it's going to be able to take a shot and bloody Kugoth Plague father with absolutely nothing that Alexander is going to be able to do to resist that effect. Uh, in fact, all other Tau units do presently get a plus one attack value bonus thanks to the Ennui Prelate being ambushed into play. And uh, just to finish things up here, that was also two cards for Tolls uh, during the uh, command phase. So Tolls, you know, things were looking a little bit grim, but now he is absolutely cleaning up. That is going to be Kugoth uh, Plague Father brought from eight hit points to bloodied in no more than a single shot from that warrior cadre, thanks to the Ion Rifle, thanks to Anshi, thanks to the Ennui Prelate, and if there is anything Anshi is all about, it is going to be combos for days. But that is the only range skirmish attack that we see Anshi shooting, and now we are going to see uh, a bit of an opportunity for uh, Alexander to pursue you know, some uh, repercussions, get some retribution, get some revenge here, because the Vicious Bloodletter is going to deliver a devastating area effect 3 volley. Uh, note that all of this can indeed be shielded, but what exactly are we going to see in regard to shields? Looks like Kugoth is going to be brought back to that planet, so it looks as though there's a little bit of takesy backsies taking place. I guess the uh, Warrior Cadre instead uh, used that opportunity to kill off the... Uh uh, that copy of the Vicious Blood Letter, so um, if he believes it works in his favor, then in his opponent's favor, I suppose, that is Alexander Chimadon being an absolutely fantastic sport, and I guess uh, instead we see Kugoth Plague Father taking a swing of one. He doesn't have any damage tokens on him with which to trigger his reaction or to trigger the banner of... Uh, you know, his signature attachment there, so that is going to be a measly one point of damage dealt out to the Ennui Prelate. It itself is going to be able to attack for four, then return to the HQ. Note that there's two copies of Xeem Yen Orbital City, and this is going to spell absolute disaster for Alexander's remaining forces, so I think Alexander may have had a chance, uh, had the Vicious Bloodletter had an opportunity to attack in return, but check this out. Ethereal Envoy is going to be able to attack, deliver its devastating 
area effect to Armor Bane Volley, even though that's damage dealt through a card effect, it still counts as an attack. And uh, that is going to be, you know, two armor bane dealt to all of those units. Then the orbital city brings that unit back to that planet. It's going to be able to, you know, return, uh, attack again, bounce back to the HQ, attack again. And that's going to be a total of area effect six armor bane. Looks as though Kugoth Plague Father used his combat turn to retreat oh man that just sucks for alexander the gun drones fired off that's going to be two points of damage to each of those units and ethereal envoy deals one well sorry two points of damage because of the ennui prelate that kills off the corn berserker all of this damage is armor ba armor pain thanks to the presence of on she there and now that black legion Heldrake is just looking to be absolutely destroyed so i can only imagine that alexander definitely thought he was getting the better end of the deal by putting that black legion held into play by activating Yavarn, but that Viorla warrior cadre has definitely come back and bitten him in the ass in a big way, because were it not for the existence of that unit, the vicious bloodletter would not be destroyed, and definitely the outcome of combat would have uh, been resolved considerably differently. But the Ennui Prelate itself attacks for two, that gets cut down to, well, it attacks for four, that gets cut down to two, uh, thanks to the, uh, thanks to the flying keyword associated with that unit. Looks as though Anshi is dealing the killing blow to that unit. Anshi is going to bounce back. Looks as though things got a little bit kind of sloppy and messy at that planet, but regardless, that is going to be a dead Corn Berserker. It's going to be a dead Black Legion Heldrake. The Viorla Warrior Cadre still sit at that planet, and that's going to be... Uh I believe that Vashia Trailblazer, I still don't know what exactly it is, I can't well zoom in on that card in the midst of this video, I suppose I could assess it during editing, but uh, that's not going to do me much of a good, and that is going to be a Planet 1 uh, by our Anshi player, so now things are about to get very interesting indeed, that's two material red type planet icons in the victory display of Tholes, and uh, we've got two green strong point type icons in the uh, victory display of Anshi, we see a Ximian Orbital City activating, and where exactly is Anshi gonna go? Anshi shows up at uh, Elwith, and this is pretty interesting. He's going to arrive at that planet. He's going to take a swing. He could kill off the opposing Chaos Fanatics, but then he's gonna bounce back to his HQ, and in doing so, this is triggering a battle right now. That means Alexander Chimadon's present rogue trader is gonna win that battle, and that means Alexander is gonna derive the benefit of Elwith's battle ability, so that was kind of a... Uh, an interesting choice, but that'll allow Alexander the choice of any of three cards, Promise of Glory, Kugoth's Nurglings, or a copy of Promise of Glory, but looks as though the Nurglings are his desirable target. He could play that out to our soon-to-be first planet. That's going to be the victory condition for both players, and then as soon as a unit moves to that planet, uh, it's going to be dealt one point of damage, and considering that Xim Yen could have the same uh, unit move to a planet multiple times, that could be a considerable bit of damage which is what I would say were it not for an Armor Bane Area Effect 2 unit completely scouring the planet of, uh, you know, Nurglings, so they're not going to be able to hang around long enough to deal a considerable amount of damage. And of course, the Viorla Warrior Cadre themselves are going to be showing up to planet number one, only for Anshi's Sanctum to be readying that unit, and then, because Anshi as an Ethereal is present, it's going to be able to take a shot during the range skirmish round if we see armor, well, I guess if we see Honor Blade or any number of other effects like another Ennui Prelate, it could be attacking for eight again. That could be a bloodied Kugoth Plague Father. He's going to be gone during the range skirmish round. Then that area effect two volley kills off the Corn Berserker. And then only that Heretic Inventor is going to remain to try to kill off the opposition. So there we go, we see the first copy of Kugoth's Nurglings. What else can we see from Alexander? What on earth could he hope to have in his hand? What could he hope to draw to overcome this ethereal onslaught that the opposition's being able to bring up against him? There's an ambush platform, there's two copies of the Ximian Orbital City, there's Anshi's Sanctum, there's the Viorla Warrior Cadre, there's the Ethereal Envoy with an associated copy of Gun Drones, and all of that is going to spell absolute disaster for our Nurgle Greater Demon, but looks as though we see an Another uh, proxied unit, because I've already seen this on she deck in one video, and because Tolls is taking a look at his deck to confirm my suspicion, I can only imagine that that's going to be a copy of the Earthcast Technician, a one-cost, one-attack, one-hit point unit with a command icon, and with the ability to search the top six cards of your deck for any uh, drone, trait, or attachment you'd like. 
then you reveal it to your opponent, then you add it to your hand. Can you imagine how disastrous that would be, how catastrophic if that was another copy of Gun Drones to slap onto that copy of the Ethereal Envoy so that it could show up at the planet, attack for four, armor bane, area effect and then bounce back to HQ, then be returned thanks to the Orbital City, then do the same, then bounce back, then be returned to do the same. That is Area Effect 12 Armor Bane. That is absolutely insane, and there is absolutely nothing that Alexander could have to try to survive uh, damage along those lines, but we see another proxy to Earth cast technician put out to that planet. Looks so neither of those technicians actually retrieved anything, which is pretty interesting. We see a copy of the Vior Law Marksman played to that planet. It's very important because it's a ranged unit. It's going to be able to attack, uh, you know, with Armor Bane during the ranged skirmish round, potentially killing off units. We've got that ambush platform that could, hell, for all I know, drop another copy of Gun Drones onto that unit. That could be an absolute uh, just catastrophe in spelling absolute doom for the Chaos opposition here. But we've got two copies of Kugos Nurglings. Both of our Warlords are going to show up at planet number one. That's going to be very interesting because uh, this is going to be both, you know, no... Okay, so I guess let's see how things are going to break down. But both of the Nurglings are each going to deal a point of damage to any unit that is commit to that planet. So Kugoth is dealt two points of damage, but we saw Warp Storm discarded as a shield. So Kugoth only takes one point of damage. He's only going to have one point of damage to move. Anshi takes a full two points of damage. The Ethereal Envoy with its associated gun drones is going to take two instances of one point of damage. But looks as though one of those points of damage was blocked by a heavy marker drone, and I'm not not sure if we actually saw a second shield card. Note that those two are uh, those are two individual instances of damage, so it's very important to shield against those individually if you do so at all. But the Ennui Prelate takes two points of damage, the No Attachments Ethereal Envoy itself takes two points of damage, and the Viorla Warrior Cadre itself is also going to be assigned two points of damage despite its ability to be readied thanks to Anshi's Sanctum. Looks as though that's a copy of Deception, and it looks as though both of our, well, I guess Thuls is treating those points points of damage as if they stemmed from the same card, uh, because once again we see another two shield value card used as a means of negating both points of damage as opposed to simply one point of damage. But in any case, I'm not entirely convinced it's going to make a tremendous bit of a difference here. Because at planet number one, we can readily see that uh, in regard to sizing up command icons, looks as though on she's got three relative to the four controlled by Kugoth. So that's going to be one resource token, one by Kugoth at that planet. Planet number two is going to be two cards, one by on she, and planet number three is going to be an additional two cards, one by on she. So let's see how on she can uh, seal the deal here. And unless uh, we see a monumental bed shitting on the part of Tolls Betelson, then uh, it's going to be. You know, Alexander uh, Chimadon sent home packing, so there we go. We see on she's Sanctum readying that copy of the Viorla Warrior Cadre. They're going to be able to attack for seven during the range skirmish round. If it were me, I would definitely take a shot at uh, Kugoth Plaguefather there to make sure that he is sent home packing. Uh, thanks to that gun drones area, well, hell, I guess he's only got seven hit points remaining. Seven minus seven equals zero. That equals a bloodied warlord, and that means he's going to be gone. He's going to be delivered from that planet. It, then we could see the Viorla Warrior, uh, sorry, the Viorla Marksman, which now all of a sudden, thanks to the uh, ambush platform, it's got a copy of Ion Rifle. It could kill off that Heretic Inventor. Note that Anshi is the player with the initiative token, and that means that the gun drones could mop up everything that's left in this alternate universe of mine, which I've constructed in my mind. Kugoth is bloodied. The uh, Heretic Inventor would be outright killed. Then uh, Area Effect 2 would kill the wounded Corn Berserker and uh, that cop both copies of Kugoth's Nurglings, but it looks as though at some point we saw an Ethereal Wisdom used. I'm not sure if it was on the... Uh on the marksman or not, that was a little bit of a waste in my mind uh, for the marksman to kill off that wounded copy of the Corn Berserker. There's the warrior cadre dealing seven points of damage to Kugoth. Kugoth is now bloodied. Uh, looks as though that Takesies Baxies alternate universe has nevertheless resulted in Kugoth being bloodied at this decisive planet. Now, what are we going to see? We've got that heretic inventor with three hit points in total. 
ah, that marksman really should have attacked that uh, berserker. This is just bizarre. Why is Anshi doing this? Anshi takes a swing to kill off the uh, copy of Kugoth's Nurglings, perhaps. Uh, Tholz has made the oversight that the, oh, well, God, I guess, pardon me, the uh, ethereal envoy is not ready that has that copy of gun drone, so don't I look like a bit of an ass? So Anshi takes a swing, he bounces back to his HQ, he did manage to kill off copy of Kugoth's Nurglings, but now the Heretic Inventor is going to have the opportunity to attack. Uh, I'm not sure what exactly it's going to take a swing at, but Anshi is going to be able to bring himself back thanks to the Orbital City, then he'll be able to kill off another copy of the Kugoth's Nurglings, and then anything that is left is going to be able to quite handily kill off the Heretic Inventor. So the Heretic Inventor takes a swing, kills off the uh, Viorla Warrior Cadre, which is good, I suppose, to get rid of a 7 attack value unit. There we go, there we see the copy of Xenian Orbital City, uh, killing off that copy of um, the remaining hail Kugoth's Nurglings, and there we go. Uh, between all these different effects, that is going to be an adequate number of attacks so that the Heretic Inventor is killed, so my bad for making that little bit of an oversight uh, in the Ethereal Envoy, of course, being exhausted on She's Sanctum, could have been ready uh, to, well, it could have been used to ready that unit, but instead we went for the Warlord Bloodying, and uh, regardless as to which units did uh, the killing in the end, Tholz was definitely able to pull through and uh, beat Alexander Chimadon. So very well played by both of our players. Thank you to Alexander Chimadon for, of course, providing me with the opportunity to commentate this game, to host it upon my channel. A huge congratulations to Tholz for ending up winning. It's always fantastic to see on she, and it's great to see uh, Kugoth definitely putting in some work himself. He wasn't able to actually do anything in regard to his reaction, in regard to his signature attachment, no Nurgle unit ended up taking a sufficient amount of damage where Fetid Haze would have been at all beneficial. So, you know, definitely let me know in the comments what you think either of our players could have done uh, differently to alter the outcome of this game. I can't help but wonder how things would have been different had Yavarn not put that Viorla Warrior Cadre into play because that Black Legion Heldrake did absolutely nothing for Alexander over the course of this match. But, nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed this game, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already, or if you are already subscribed, as ever, you're always encouraged to share this content, because the more people there are that stumble upon this game, the more people may give Conquest a try, enjoy what they experience, and of course, every dollar we send to Fantasy Flight Games with every new player that buys into this LCG means more support, more development, and a longer lifespan for this game we all know and love. If at any point you'd like to get in touch with with me, I would encourage you to do so through Facebook or on Twitter, and if you ever feel so inclined to help support the Hive Tyrant, I would be honored were you to donate or make any kind of contribution to my Patreon. But once again, thank you so much for watching, and as always, be sure to check back in again soon for much more Conquest LCG content to come.